Thanks, Aaron, and welcome in to a college football Saturday in Morgantown. The Mountaineers ready to roll in 2013. Today, they open up the season playing host to William & Mary, an FCS school out of the Colonial Athletic Association. Hello and welcome, everybody. I'm Adam Alexander. So good to have you with us for the first ever triple header on Fox Sports 1. You know, the big headline here in Morgantown all week long, who's going to start at quarterback for Dana Holgerson? Is it Paul Millard, the backup the last couple of years to Geno Smith, or will it be the transfer from Florida State, Clint Trickett? We'll answer that question in a few moments. First, let's bring in our quarterback, Chris Sims, who played his college football at the University of Texas. I, I promise we're going to talk plenty about the quarterbacks today, and their best friend this afternoon may very well be another transfer, Charles Sims, who comes from Houston. Yes, there's no doubt, Adam. He's this year's version of Tavon Austin for this West Virginia offense. He's big, he's fast, he's quick. He is a very dynamic player that they're going to find as many ways possible to get the ball in his hand and let him roll. An all-conference performer at Houston, he should be strong today. William and Mary thinking about trying to pull off the upset on the road. But it's going to be tough this afternoon. This place is electric. The first Saturday of the college football season is here. The kickoff is next on Fox Sports 1. Welcome back on a humid afternoon in Morgantown, Virginia. It's Fox College Football, presented by GEICO. William & Mary on the road, trying to bounce back from a 2-9 season a year ago, taking on West Virginia, who was 7-6 in 2012, and now our Ford keys to the game. Chris? Well, William & Mary, I think it's pretty obvious. The team is not quite as deep as West Virginia. They need to run the ball early, take a little pressure off their new quarterback, and more importantly, it'll eat up some clock, speed up the game a little bit, and let their defense rest. It's not a real deep defense. They need to play that angle today. West Virginia, of course, a, a, a Division I team, they do have a little more depth on their side. West Virginia, hey, it's about laying the foundation for this new, this new year on defense. Of course, they struggled last year, but they are extremely confident in what they got coming in here to this game. Defensive coordinator Keith Patterson this feels really good. They got some key parts moved around, some new guys in some new positions. And I, I without a doubt, think they will be an improved defense this year. Michael Molinari, the home state kid, going to tee it up at the 35-yard line to get this season underway. Back deep for William & Mary, Trey McBride, and Jarrell Cooper. Cooper, a speedster, 5'10", 190-pound junior. All the energy in the building, and the ball blows off the tee. we got to wait a little longer to get 2013 underway. A little anticipation's always good. The fans are antsy here, yeah. and I like it. They love their football in Morgantown. it away and finally we're playing football in 2013 McBride gonna take a knee and William and Mary gets their first crack from their own 25 yard line here comes the senior quarterback it's Michael Graham who will lead the offense this afternoon for the try Michael Graham he's a guy that's got a little experience playing quarterback the last few years has had some success he's in a new offense this year with offensive coordinator Kevin Rogers he made a great it he made a lot of strides through training camp learning the offense He's their guy. He's the best thrower of the group of quarterbacks they got. And uh, we'll see what this William & Mary offense has today. He's got a pretty good back behind him in Keith McBride, who should shoulder the load in the backfield this afternoon. A couple of tight ends on first down and 10. Graham going to give to Keith McBride. Not much there. Got a couple of yards as he falls forward. May have gotten three. And Eric Kinsey from his defensive end position, making his presence known early defensively for coordinator Keith Patterson for the Mountaineers. Well, like we talked about all week, we thought they would try to run the ball early. It's a new quarterback. It's a, it's a tough environment here in West Virginia. 
get everybody settled in the game. They got a few new guys on the offensive line. Take some of the anxiety out and play ball. Second down and eight. So I'll look at Isaiah Bruce, a kid that's really come on, a red shirt sophomore for this Mountaineer defense. Graham going to put it in the air. Dumps it off to Laws in the flat, the fullback. Short of the first down as he fell across the 35. It'll set up third down and four. And now we look at our impact players today when William & Mary is on offense. Yeah, Isaiah Bruce, he plays the end of the line of scrimmage in this 3-4 defense. He's what they call the spur on this defense. He's really the second in leading tackles last year. He is going to bring a whole different dyna dynamic to the defense. He can rush the passer. He can run. He can, he can get back in pass coverage. And then there's Trey McBride, the best player on this William & Mary offense. Great receiver who's got a lot of skill. Graham in trouble on third down. Going to roll out. He finds McBride, but overshot an incomplete, a three and out for the Tribe. And a great job by Will Clark to put the pressure on. Little bit of example, little bit of example of some nerves there. Graham uh, uh, McBride down here was kind of open right at the start, but Michael Graham, first game, a little antsy in the pocket. Had, had Trey McBride out in the flat there all along, just was a little late to see him and get him the ball. John Carpenter standing at his 11-yard line. This will be his first collegiate punt. And back deep for West Virginia, Jordan Thompson. Stands at his own 30-yard line. Going to bound out of bounds right around the 35. Not bad field position for West Virginia. And if you're one of the fans that was so concerned about how the defense would play this season, they answered the bell on the Mountaineer side, and now we find out who's going to get the start offensively at quarterback, and it's going to be Paul Millard. Yeah, Paul Millard, it's no surprise. I think reading between the lines, we thought he would be the guy that started the game. He's got experience in the offense. It's the first game of the year. He can get the team going on the right foot. Um, not, not really surprised to see him run out there. He's got a lot of weapons at his disposable offensively. First carry of the day, no surprise. Charles Sims gets it right side. Not much there, maybe a yard as he went out to about the 34-yard line. Jasper Coleman, one of the big defensive linemen inside for William & Mary, there to make the stop. Like I said, I think we'll see a heavy dose of Charles Sims early. Millard out of the pistol. He's got Sims right behind him. Receivers everywhere. Three split to the near side. Millard throwing there. Dekeel Shorts on the reception. Takes it out near midfield. Shorts a kid that they love. A true freshman out of New Jersey. Yes, a guy they really do like. It's, it's a very important part to this West Virginia offense, this slot receiver. you got to trust him. He's got to be smart. He's, he's going to fill that role for them. And they're going to play quick. Millard again out of the pistol. This time throwing right side. Caught by K.J. Myers. He's taking the ball into William & Mary territory. Pulled down at the 46-yard line. DeAndre Houston Carson from his cornerback position able to get the stop for the try. As you see, West Virginia, they're always going to stay at the line of scrimmage. Whether they huddle, it's going to be a quick huddle. They're going to keep the pace up. That's Smith in motion. One of the junior college transfers they added in the offseason. He's going to get the carry coming near side. Sims leading the way as a blocker, breaking a tackle and falling down inside the 40-yard line for another first down is Dreamus Smith. First time he's touched the ball today. Yes, well, they're excited about their, their running backs. They're very deep at that position. They got three guys, four guys, really, that they feel are really quality running backs. How about Sims? The coach has told us he's humble, doing the little things. Out as a lead blocker on that play. Now he stands behind Millard. First and 10. Mountaineers moving it early. Millard over the middle's got his man and caught this time by Devontae Mathis. Another first down to the William & Mary 24-yard line. A pickup of 13. The safety, Jerome Cuplin made the stop, but the Mountaineers have got it rolling early. Back to the run game. Sims dances inside the 20 and down to the 18 before Steven Sennett is able to pull him down. West Virginia's looking good here early. Millard's been very, very smooth, very calm. Good to see from your quarterback. Nice mix of the run and pass. They'll throw it on second down. 
And it's caught once again. Is it? It's bobbled, and they're going to say incomplete? No. It is, it is a completion. First down. Yeah, that was close there. I'm not so sure. If I'm the uh, William & Mary coaches, I might want to look at that play. Dekeel Shorts, the true freshman, with his second catch of the afternoon. He's the motion man here. Millar just outside the 10. Going to give it to Sims. He dances around. Makes a man miss. Welcome to West Virginia, Charles Sims. Touchdown, Mountaineers. Well, like we talked about early in the game, West Virginia, they're going to give these running backs some carries. They're so talented. Ease everybody in the game. They got some new guys on their offensive line as well. It just makes life easier on everybody when you can run the ball early, get the nerves out of your system. Great first drive by the Mountaineers. Josh Lambert to add the extra point. The redshirt freshman gets for the first time in his career. Mountaineers taking care of business. A long drive, nice mix of the run and pass, and it all ends with Charles Sims in the end zone. West Virginia leading William & Mary, 7-0 in Morgantown. West Virginia not wasting any time, already up 7-0 on William & Mary. Just under four minutes played here in the opening quarter. Eight plays, 67 yards, it took them just over two minutes. How about Millard? Strong start for him. Yeah, it really was. That's probably the reason he got the start today, really. Knows the offense, has been in it's been in Dana Holgerson's system. But they want to get off to a smooth start here. You start the guy that knows knows the system and can get people in the right places. Newcomers. Shorts caught two passes. Millard, basically a newcomer. When you talk about starting, he's four for four. Shorts, uh, we talked about. Sims had the runs and scored the touchdown. Dana Holgerson doing a great job of using the new faces and putting him to work early. So Molinari to kick it away. And again, it's Cooper and McBride. And again, nothing doing. The tribe will start at the 25. Let's go back to the scoring play. Well, you, really, Golinski right here, he makes the big block. They catch William and Mary in a blitz. You know, that's the problem with blitzing down here in the red zone. You make one or two guys miss, miss, then there's nobody in the back end to make the tackle. Sims, phenomenal in the open field. For a big guy, uh, I can't tell you how impressed both of us were in practice the other day for how sweet his feet are. How about the shake on Jasper Coleman? Huh? Man, that was pretty great. Second opportunity for William and Mary offensively. Graham running the offense. With him in the shotgun, Keith McBride. And actually, this time getting the football is going to be Kendall Anderson, first carry of the day, a redshirt freshman. And Isaiah Bruce, a name you'll hear a lot on this West Virginia defense, able to make the stop. It's going to be important here for William & Mary to get a first down, let their defense get on the sideline, get a breather, make a few adjustments. Second down and six. The Tribe three and out on their opening possession. Graham again working out of the shotgun. And again, it's Anderson going left and not much there. And a nice job by Nick Kwiatkowski, one of the great inside linebackers on this team, to make a stop. Yeah, West Virginia, they're very excited about their linebacking group. They got Kwiatkowski, Barber, Brandon Golson, Isaiah Bruce, uh, if, you gotta, if you're playing the 3-4 defense, you got to have some linebackers with some size and some strength. They're trying to get the personnel here to fit this 3-4. They're, they're really excited about it. Third down and five. Keep an eye on Trey McBride. Standout wide receiver split it to the near side bottom of your screen. They're looking that way, but this time they go to the tight end, and a nice job to come up and make the stop defensively. Carl Joseph, who led this team in tackles a year ago, it's short of the first down and a kicking situation once again for William and Mary. Yeah, Carl Joseph, I think a guy that we were also impressed with in practice the other day for a safety, 
He is thick and strong looking. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing that he was the leading tackler as a, as a freshman last year. Uh, he is the leader of that group back there. The catch there made by Christian Reeves, the transfer from Virginia Tech. And now John Carpenter to punt once again. Jordan Thompson standing deep for the Mountaineers, second time today. Calls for the fair catch. Hauls it in at the 27-yard line. West Virginia, one for one. Had the ball once, they put it in the end zone, and they've got the ball when we continue. You think they don't love their football in West Virginia? How about the crowd today? Enjoying game one of our triple header on Fox Sports 1. Coming up next, third-ranked Oregon taking on Nichols State. Marcus Mariota, DeAnthony Thomas, and, of course, the new head coach, Mark Helfrich. And then tonight, the nightcap, 10 p.m. Eastern time, 19th-ranked Boise State at the all-new Husky Stadium out west. That'll be a good one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it myself. West Virginia scored on their opening drive. Millard was 4 for 4. His favorite receiver was Shorts. He caught two passes. Got Mathis involved. And the stud, like we thought, Charles Sims finished it off. An 11-yard touchdown score. Twenty-seven yard line is where the Mountaineers start this drive. Millard out of the shotgun. Little play action to Sims. Going to get it to him on the screen right side. He's in the open field. Gets it across the 30 and another first down as he goes near the 40 yard line. Pickup of 11 yards on the play. Trey Reed came over from his cornerback position to make the stop and once again Tempo, tempo, tempo for this West Virginia offense. Yeah, it's the beauty of West Virginia and Dana Holgerson. They always keep the pressure on. Millard again, out of the shotgun. Looks like some pressure coming for William and Mary. Dreamus Smith gets the ball, flag is down. Picked up a couple of yards, but this might be a hole. Came right in the interior of that line. Yeah, some, we've seen a few pressure defenses from William & Mary here, here early. Holding, number 76, 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. Like I was saying, you know, we've seen a few few pressure defenses. It's good. It's good from the standpoint they might be able to pressure the quarterback, maybe clog up some running lanes. But the problem with it is you're going to leave some skill guys in some space. And at the end of the day, West Virginia skill guys got a little more talent than William & Mary. First and 20 now. First time we've seen adversity for this Mountaineer offense today. Millard going to throw. He's got shorts again across the 40 and near the 45-yard line. Millard looked sharp in practice the other day. He used shorts a lot, and they're just uh, they're going to keep using them. Got 15 yards there, second down and five. Run the ball on second down. Not much doing for Smith. Braxton Hicks, the defensive end, stopped him as he fell at the 45. The William & Mary defensive line, they're a pretty stout group. I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of problems physically holding up throughout the game. The problem is, will they get worn down? Not a lot of depth on the defensive line. It's a hot day. I'm, I'm interested to see if they can keep up with the pace. First time we've seen the Mountaineers in third down today on the offensive side of the football. Millard out of the pistol. Looking right, throws that way, and he's got his man. First down for Devontae Mathis, who goes out of bounds right at the 40-yard line of William & Mary. Well, that, well, as you see here, Mathis really just running the out route from the slot, pitch and catch wide open. First down running play. Smith trying to make a man miss. He can't do so. Great effort defensively. Quincy September comes through and throws him for a three-yard loss. That third down, that was a big play for William & Mary defense. Had a chance to get off the field, let their offense get back on, get them some rhythm. But here we are now, uh, you know, West Virginia, they're starting to mount, mount the number of plays on the Tribe here early. Four wide receivers. On second down and 14, no problems with a first and 20 a moment ago. And Smith in motion. Millard, quick pass right side. And again, it shorts. 
the true freshman, really had the coaches talking this week, and he's able to slide inside of the linebacker, Luke Rhodes, and it's going to be third down and eight. Another critical down for the, the Tribe defense. Can they get off the field? The second time, West Virginia has faced third down on this drive. They're one for one. Millard looking left, going through his progressions, rolling right. Lobs it out of bounds. Just had to throw that one away, and that's great coverage by William & Mary. Great coverage. If I'm William & Mary, I err on the side of coverage. I would rather make West Virginia execute and not make anything easy on them. If you blitz, give them chances to throw quick, sh quick throws, get their guys in space one-on-one -on -one with the William & Mary skill guys. That is going to make it hard on some of those guys in the back end of the secondary for William & Mary. So if I'm them, I play it safe early on, make them execute West Virginia's offense, and then rally and make tackles. The ball spotted at the 38-yard line. And West Virginia, with some confusion in a kicking situation, calls timeout. And right there you see the new coach of special teams, Joe DeForce, was the defensive coordinator last year, moved over to special teams, and a great get for Dana Holgerson. 11 years he led the special teams at Oklahoma State, without a doubt, one of the best in the country at what he does. Yes, it really was. And, and West Virginia, they believe in all three phases of the game, of course. They got the kind of athletes that can make big plays, returning kicks and punts. Getting a good special teams coach here is only going to enhance that. And, you know, he said something that was interesting to me in preparation for the opener. He said, we want three specialists in the kicking game when you talk about kicking the football, and they've been able to do that. Michael Molinari is the man that does kickoffs. Nick O'Toole will be the punter, and Josh Lambert, the place kicker. And Lambert here going to try a 55-yarder. to be his first career field goal attempt. His career long in high school, 51. This one from the right hash. Comes up short. No good. And that's great news for William and Mary, who now gets the ball back and will have a nice situation when you talk about field position. They trail it 7-0, trying to get back in the game. When we return, you're watching Fox Sports 1. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. Fox Sports 1 opening game of a triple header on this Saturday afternoon. William and Mary trailing the Mountaineers 7-0, and they've got the ball for the third time today. And in their first two offensive possessions, three and out. Yeah, kind of one of the negatives about attempting a 55-yard field goal, like you saw there. You know, you, you, you give the other offense some good field position, and now they can uh, hopefully build on that. Graham, who did some shotgun on the last possession, goes under center here and finds his fullback in the flat. Catch made by Darnell Laws. Yeah, going, going into kind of the keys of the game with the running the ball, I expect a lot of high percentage passes as well from William & Mary. Again, it just get the completions, keep the clock going, put their offense in some good situations. That offensive line for William & Mary with two redshirt freshmen starting a tackle. That's always dangerous. They've done a decent job early. Second down and four. Here's the Jet. Cooper with a carry. Gets outside. He's got some room before he's tackled out of bounds inside West Virginia territory. And it was Darwin Cook who made the stop a kid they really like on the West Virginia side defensively, but Cooper's someone that can change the game. Yeah, no doubt. I, I really like the Jarrell Cooper kid. Got a chance to see him a little bit on some of the spring practice film that I acquired, and he is your typical third down, really quick, and he is possible. He, he, can, he can break the big one. Catches the ball to the backfield real well as well, too. He's in the backfield here on first and ten. Ball inside the 45. 
Graham with a little play action. Looking down the right side. Trey McBride is there, and a spectacular catch as he holds it in inside the five, put it down at the West Virginia three-yard line. Wow, great play call. Take a shot once you cross the 50-yard line. This is what this kid does best, Trey McBride. He's got unbelievable body control. The ball's in the air. What, what you would call the 50-50 ball, he seems to come up with it a lot more than 50% of the time. Is Ishmael Banks back there defensively for West Virginia? Nice answer for William and Mary, who fell down 7-0. Consecutive three and outs. Graham under center. Two tight ends. He's going to throw it left side. Again, it's McBride. Incomplete. Overshot him in the corner of the end zone. Nice safe throw there by Michael Graham. Put it out there where it give his receiver a chance. Or, or nobody gets it. Uh, just about a foot too too much for, uh, for McBride. But that's the kind of catch McBride believes he should haul in. Yes, he does. They, they all believe that he can haul it in. This time it's Sean Ballard. Split out to the left on second down and goal. From the West Virginia three. Cooper the carry. Spinning at the line of scrimmage and stop before he gets in the end zone. Great effort defensively by Jared Barber to make the stop. Third down and goal, and they're going to spot this ball right inside the one. Big play here. West Virginia, of course, is going to be expecting run. So does William & Mary try to smash it up in there between the tackles, or do they try to do a little bootleg or play-action pass and get something easy in the pass game? High formation behind Graham. Third and goal, he's going to pass it. Rolling right, end zone, touchdown. Darnell Laws out of the backfield's got his first score. Three twenty-eight to play in the opening quarter. And after falling behind 7-0 and really getting no production on offense a nice drive by the tribe to put it in the end zone really was great play call there by kevin rogers like we were talking about maybe not quite the defense knows you're going to run they might not be as physically stout as west virginia call a little play action pass catch them off guard find the easy completion john carpenter with the extra point up and good 3.28 to go in the opening quarter. The offense coming alive for William and Mary. The great catch by Trey McBride. And it's Darnell Laws who is on the receiving end of the touchdown for Michael Graham. We're tied at seven in Morgantown. Three twenty-eight to play in the opening quarter here in Morgantown, West Virginia. All tied at seven. Mountaineers got on the board first. William and Mary able to answer on their third possession of the game. Seven plays, 66 yards, 423 on the scoring drive. Yeah, I think the most important thing about that drive was just letting the defense get on the sideline and get a breather and get their wits back together. Carpenter to kick it off from the 35-yard line. It will be Sims and Wendell Smallwood, the true freshman, back deep for the Mountaineers. They kick it to Sims, who grabs it at the goal line. Across the 25 to the 30 and brought down at the 35, but there is a flag. And now let's get a grain break. Lowe's never stop improving. Here's Patrick O'Neill. Adam, thank you very much. We go to the Horseshoe, Ohio State, hosting Buffalo. Two drives, two touchdowns for Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes. Another two-point conversion. It's 16 to nothing. So, Adam and Chris, that's the start Urban Meyer was looking for for his Buckeyes. So, Ohio State, one of the team's many like in the country to be a part of the national championship picture at the end of the year. Starting the season off at home. And here it has been tight. Mountaineers opened up the day with a long scoring drive, put it in the end zone. Charles Sims, the transfer from Houston, able to cap it off with a score. They will start after the penalty deep inside their own territory here. 
Wendell Smallwood in the backfield. First time we've seen him in the offense today. Carries it left side. Pulled to the ground by Mike Riley. Smallwood's another guy we're really excited to see today. A true freshman, but does he have the he has the look of, of being something special? He's a put your foot in the ground and hit the gap and fly kind of guy. I, I'm excited to see him today. A high school teammate of Dekeel Shorts. Both of them came here in January and already making their presence known as true freshmen. It's Cody Clay, the motion man. He's a West Virginia kid. Smallwood again on second down and four. Takes it near the marker, going to be a little bit short as George Beerhalter pulled him down. That, that's just a defensive lineman's name, isn't it, Beerhalter? Doesn't get any more defense than that. But, you know, getting back to West Virginia, I like how they're staying patient with the run game here. You know, they're trying to become a tougher team on both sides of the ball. So run the ball, make your offensive line tough. It's going to change the dynamic of this team this year in the Big 12. Third and short for the Mountaineers. Full house backfield. The carry to Sims, who fell across the line and has the first down. Mike Riley made the stop. Shannon Dawson, the offensive coordinator for West Virginia, and Dana Holgerson, who kind of share play calling duties, have done a nice job of mixing it up today, not just with what they're doing from a pass run standpoint, but the number of players they have gotten involved in the game. And with Smith in motion. Millard, little play fake, dumps it left side to McCartney, who makes a man miss and has another first down, racing out near the 30-yard line before he's shoved out by Jerome Coupland. Caught William and Mary in a blitz, leaves the receiver one-on-one -on -one outside. He makes a guy miss and gets the first down. Ryan Smith that he went around, the best cover corner for William and Mary. McCartney with his first catch today. Remember last year, started the year at West Virginia, played the first eight games, left the team, came back earlier this summer, and earned a starting position for Dana Holgerson. Some room to work for this offense after starting at their own eight-yard line. Sims on the carry. A little bit of operating space as he falls at the 35-yard line. Luke Rhodes pulled him down. Luke Rhodes, an interesting story defensively for William and Mary. Started his redshirt freshman year as an outside linebacker. Injury moved him inside and had an amazing season for the try. Underneath center, expect a run. Second down and five. Millard, the handoff and plenty of room again. It's Sims who takes it across midfield and is pulled down at the 46-yard line of William and Mary. Again, underneath the center, I would expect to see another run. This time left side to Sims. He cuts it back and dances for a couple. Shoestring tackle for Luke Rhodes and Braxton Hicks was there as well. A little bit of a key for the Wayman Mary defense. You know, you know, West Virginia, they like to be in the shotgun. If I see the quarterback under, underneath the center, I, as William and Mary, would expect to see a run in between the tackles. Closing on the end of the opening quarter. West Virginia on the move, second and eight. Little play action here, and they're going deep. McCartney, the man down there, and he can't run under it, incomplete. Fans here wanted a flag. Jasper Coleman putting the pressure on Paul Millard. A good time to take a shot. They've run the ball a few plays in a row. They come back with the play action, try to get McCartney over the top. Millard just throws it, throws it a little deep. Millard's a big boy, so he can take the hit. I'm not worried about him. Yeah, Millard, 6'2", 220. He's a thick kid. Eight seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Looks like it's going to be pressure from William Mary defense. Third and eight. The Look. Mountaineers, two of three on third down today. Look for a quick throw from West Virginia. Millard throws it left side, and it's incomplete. Trying to find Ronald Carswell, but he would have been short of the first down anyway. And Ryan Smith doing a nice job to cover him up. Second punt of the day for West Virginia. Nick O'Toole in to kick it away. 
Ballard calls for the fair catch. He'll haul it in at the 11. And we have reached the end of the opening quarter. West Virginia able to strike first, take a 7-0 lead. Charles Sims got in the end zone. But William and Mary able to answer, and they will have the ball when we come back. 7-7 at the end of one in Morgantown, West Virginia. Good to have you with us on Fox Sports 1. Fifteen minutes complete in Morgantown. 7-7 seven, seven our score. Let's look now at our KFC first quarter stats. Well, of course, West Virginia's had a, had the ball a little bit more, gone down the field, had a little more success. But, hey, William and Mary, they weathered the storm here early, hung in there, put a good, put a good drive together. They got something to build on. And the defense now seems to be getting a groove as well. So that, that's an important thing here as we go along. Kind of a bend, don't break. Ten first downs given up by that William & Mary defense. Only seven points. Here's Graham on first and ten from his own 11-yard line. Keith McBride gets the carry. Not much happening there. And among those at the bottom of the pile, Shaq Rao. The big nose tackle for the Mountaineers. I think it'll be a tall order running outside on this West Virginia defense because of the two guys they got at linebacker out there. Brandon Golson, Isaiah Bruce. They're pretty physical. They're both strong. They can set the edge and kind of funnel all these outside runs back inside to their, their inside linebackers and their defensive tackles. McBride and Ballard. Split top of your screen. Inside handoff to McBride. Some hard hitting going on. As he closes on the 20-yard line, brought down at the 18. McBride's a big, powerful running back. He's built to run in between the tackles. Third and four, good situation for the William & Mary offense. Don't have to do too much. I would expect a pretty high percentage pass concept here. And I would look for Trey McBride on the outside. You see him down here in the bottom of your screen. He's their go-to guy. When Graham is in trouble, he's going to look to him. He had the big catch on the scoring drive. Graham is going to put it up. Got some trouble. Dumps it over the middle. Ballard finding the open space. Has the first down as he takes it close to the 30. And great. that's kind of his M.O. Yeah, great job by Graham in the pocket. Had a little pressure. Steps around it. Finds Ballard coming across, sitting in the zone. Really nice, really nicely done. If I'm West Virginia on defense, I, I go out of my way to put a safety over the top of Trey McBride. Make somebody else on this William and Mary offense beat you. Here's Graham working out of the shotgun on first and ten. Anderson gets the call, bounces off a tackle, but can go nowhere thanks to Brandon Golson. They love this kid, the junior college transfer. Yeah, again, another guy that I think both you and I were really impressed with. He just pa he, he passes the look test. He looks like an outside linebacker. You know, they want to play this 3-4 defense. You need outside linebackers that can do it all. They need to hold up in the run game, rush the passer, drop into coverage. He's a good-looking guy. He came from Georgia Military Academy and has found a home quite quickly on those starting outside linebacker positions opposite Isaiah Bruce. I look for play action pass. That's what we get here on second down and nine. What about the grab by Laws out of the backfield? One-handed stab, and he's out to the 35. It'll bring up a third down and three. Yeah, Laws is a player that every offense needs in college football. I know this coaching staff here with William & Mary, they really like him. He can do it all. He's a physical blocker. He can run the ball if they want him to. And as you see there, got some real good hands. He does. He's one hand to keep it alive and then haul it in. William and Mary, two of four on third down this afternoon. Trey McBride in the slot. I'd watch him. Instead, they come near side to Anderson, who's got the first down and more across the 40 and finally pulled down at the 45-yard line by Kyle Rose. Nice play call. Something we haven't seen yet. Good little wrinkle to the offense. 
I'm sure West Virginia was, as I, looking at Trey McBride. Gets the first down, keeps the clock going, lets this William & Mary defense rest a little on the sideline. Closing on 10 minutes to play here in the opening half. And the longer William & Mary hangs around, the more confidence they gain. Good field position here. First and 10 from the 45. Cooper, who had the big run a moment ago, gets five yards. Now let's get a Fox game break to Patrick O'Neill in Los Angeles. Adam, thank you. Well, last night on Fox Sports 1, FCS School North Dakota State upset Kansas State. Look what's happening here. Villanova, another FCS school leading Boston College. That's Jamal Abdur Rahman, his second touchdown. So right now, Nova over BC, 14 to 7. Let's go back to Adam and Chris. Thank you, Patrick. William and Mary on the move. All tied at seven here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Second down and four. Graham looking to pass. Again, it's Laws who's got room inside the 40 and down to the 30 before he's knocked out of bounds by Carl Joseph. The well, Tribe have got it working offensively. Well, this is the third time today we've seen Laws be able to outflank the defense with these little quick play action passes into the flat. Yeah, really a good good concept. Trey McBride there kind of gets in the way of the linebacker, makes it hard to, for him to fight through traffic, and it's just an easy completion for the quarterback. Pick up there, 19 yards. First and 10 at the 30. Law's the motion man. They've had him doing a little bit of everything today. Graham, play fake, throwing left side. Trey McBride caught at the one-yard line. An amazing catch by the junior. That's what he does. That's what we, we knew he would do it all week. West Virginia was prepared for it. They had a safety rolled over the top. Really, Michael Graham had no business throwing the ball. But, hey, when you got a playmaker, sometimes you give him a chance. Great job. Gets the foot in bounds. First down, and William & Mary... We thought if they could hang around, that they could make a game. As long as they didn't get blown out real quick with some big plays, that they could hang around and, and physically match up with West Virginia. Fell behind 7-0, a chance to take the lead here. Second and goal, they mark McBride out at the two. Graham rolling left, just going to throw this one away. A lot of pressure there by the Mountaineers. Yes. One thing I'm really liking, too, on the William & Mary side, the offensive coordinator, Kevin Rogers, he's doing a great job of keeping West Virginia off balance, staying patient with the run. He didn't panic when they got down early. And, of course, if you stay patient with the run, it opens up a lot in your passing game and makes life a lot easier on a quarterback who doesn't have a whole lot of experience in Michael Graham. Second down and goal. Trey McBride out wide to the right. In the backfield, it's Keith McBride. That's Laws, the motion man. Keith McBride carrying the ball, stacked up, going to be dropped for a loss of three or four. What about the pursuit there? Yeah, there's no other way to say it right there than William & Mary just got pushed back. West Virginia's defense, big shack in the middle. They just pushed the pile back and gave the running back no lanes to run through. Eric Kinsey there on the tackle, another guy that, again, he, he fits the mold of this new, this 3-4 defense that Keith Patterson runs here in West Virginia. Started camp third on the depth chart. A lot of hard work, good attitude. Ascended the first team for Keith Patterson. Be careful if you're Michael Graham here. You want to come away with points. Third and goal. Graham going to throw it. Short drop. Now he's going to run. Dancing around, dives. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, William and Mary. Really a great play by Michael Graham right there. My old coach, John Gruden, used to say, you know why this is a great play? Because this is the only play. Nobody opened downfield in the past game. He realizes it, doesn't try to force the ball, and makes a play happen with his feet. And really a, a gutsy dive there to, to get in the end zone, taking a little contact. Dozy Azima is down on the field for West Virginia, the outside linebacker who was trying to make the stop at the goal line. Recorded a couple of tackles today, a 6'2", 234-pound senior, and a Pomona, New York. And they're looking at Graham on the sidelines, and 
You know, quarterback has been a, a sensitive subject <laughs> when you talk about injuries in William and Mary. And Rafael Ortiz, who hurt a shoulder last year. And the same for Brent Caprio, who actually was back for spring ball but hurt his foot, neither able to go throughout camp, won't play here today, and there you see the hard shot he took at the goal line. Yeah, Carl Joseph gives him a nice forearm right in the face. You know us quarterbacks, we're not always used to getting hit, so we take a shot, we go to the sideline, make sure everything's in order. Okay, we'll see it one more time. They are reviewing it upstairs still. We'll see if he gets in. I thought he got the ball over before the knee came down. It's hard to see with all the pile of bodies. I think it's going to be hard to overturn this call. The ball definitely got to the goal line. Definitely did. The question is whether that knee went down right there, but I, I think he's across. There's just not enough visual evidence there to overturn that, in my opinion. Jared Barber was hanging on for his life, the linebacker for West Virginia, but... Unable to keep him out of the end zone. The touchdown will stand. And on to try the extra point, John Carpenter. Townsend won at UConn. On Thursday night, last night, North Dakota State, another FCS team. Goes on the road and beats Kansas State. And here, William and Mary taking care of business. 14-7, they are on top with 8.56 to play, and the score made possible by that outstanding wide receiver, Trey McBride. Yeah, Trey McBride, he's going to be playing on Sunday, one day in the NFL. He shows why here. We'll be back. Fourteen-seven, William and Mary leading over West Virginia with 8.56 to play. Here in the opening half. Michael Graham, a gutsy kid, playing like the senior leader that he is. Yeah, he's really played really played well so far. Uh, I can't tell you just how impressed I am with William and Mary all together right now. Just weathering that early storm. Didn't look good early, but they hung in there, and now the defense and offense are in a groove, and, and now, now momentum's changed, and the pressure's on this West Virginia offense. I'm interested to see if we're going to see Trickett or Millard here now coming into this series. Sims and Smallwood. Back deep for the Mountaineers. Carpenter puts this one into the end zone, and Smallwood going to bring it out. The room across the 20. Finally brought down at the 26-yard line, and that's where the Mountaineers will begin here. And once again, it's going to be Millard that leads the offense. Actually, Trickett has put his helmet on, and he's going to be the guy. I saw Millard with his helmet on. The Trickett going to be the man with 8.49 to play in the second quarter. Well, they were wondering when they could insert insert him and get him in the game. Here you go, down 14-7. Not the most ideal time for a guy to get in the game, but he's in it, and I'm sure he's excited to play. Looking like pressure early here on Trickett. First play of him, a run. Charles Sims, right side. Across the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Jerome Cuplin comes over to make the stop. Trick at a kid that graduated in three years from Florida State. Announced in May he would transfer here to West Virginia. Some movement in the offensive line and going to go five yards in the wrong direction here. Ball start, number 64, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Mark Glowinski, a little anxious to get going. That'll make it second down and 10. Now, I'm excited to see what Clint Trickett has here. You know, a coach's son, hasn't been here too long. He's really got only 20 practices under his belt, so that's not easy for a quarterback, of course. Let's see if he can execute the offense. Second down and nine. And again, it's Sims who gets the carry. Falling across the 30-yard line. You mentioned Trickett is a coach's son. His father, Rick, the offensive line coach at Florida State, where he transferred from. But he used to be the offensive line coach here at West Virginia. So he grew up watching this team play. He knows what it's all about in Mountaineer country. 
the college football world is a small world for coaches. Third down and six, four wide receivers. Trickett gonna put it up, tipped and nearly intercepted. Incomplete as he tried to find Devontae Mathis. And the Mountaineers go three and out. They're going to have to punt it away. Great effort by Green to get his hands up and knock it away. Yeah, Eric Eric Green right here as you see him just does a great job really of reading the quarterback's eyes and then reacting to the throw and making the play. It, it, really athletic linebacker. I expect we'll see him more today. Here's the punt for O'Toole. Ballard calls for the fair catch at the 21. William and Mary leading 14-7. They've got the ball when we come back to Morgantown. This week, UFC Wednesday comes to Fox Sports 1 as third-ranked light heavyweight Glover Teixeira takes on Ryan Bader. Then it's the season premiere of The Ultimate Fighter featuring rival coaches Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate. UFC Wednesday brings you eight straight hours of great UFC action beginning at 4 p.m. Eastern with a UFC fight night pre-fight show and the prelims this week right here on Fox Sports 1. William and Mary on top 14-7. Bit of a stunner here in Morgantown. They've got the ball just across their own 20-yard line. <laughs> A little run on first down. Yep, it was well, Anderson who got the ball there. The tide has turned here a little bit, so we're going to get to see this West Virginia defense, see how they can handle some pressure here. I mean, two things that jump out at me here early. Take away Trey McBride, and I know he's made some phenomenal catches, so there's nothing you can do about that. But the other thing, the fullback in the flat, Darnell Laws, he's got three, maybe four receptions here early. Uh, it's really hurt the West Virginia defense. they got to be aware of that. Really moved Laws around, taking advantage of his many abilities on the offensive side of the football. Running again on second down. Anderson hit and stood up as he went to the 25-yard line. Shaq Rowell, the big nose tackle, wrestled him down. Rowell and Clark, the two defensive linemen for West Virginia, both fifth-year seniors. That's nice to have if you're Keith Patterson, a first-year deep coordinator. Yeah, there, there's no question. The guys he can depend on, they they played a little bit, they got a little experience. They got some big guys up front. The thing I'm, I'm most interested here, here we are, third and five and six, pretty manageable situation for the William and Mary offense. After missing their first two on third down, they've now converted four in a row. Here they're going to Anderson out of the backfield, who makes a nice grab on the dump, but he's gonna be short of the first down. Isaiah Bruce among those who came up and made the stop. Nick Kwiatkowski also there to make the tackle on Anderson and pull him down shy of the opening of the first down. Great play call here by William & Mary. They catch West Virginia in a blitz. I can't tell you how great of a tackle this was by Kwiatkowski. If Kwiatkowski doesn't make this tackle, it might have gone for 60. Carpenter to punt it away. Great effort that time by that West Virginia defense. Jordan Thompson bobbles and pulls it in. That'll scare you to death as a coach. West Virginia trailing in this one 14-7, but they've got the ball when we return. Humid day in Morgantown, West Virginia, where William & Mary leads 14-7 over the homestanding Mountaineers. And if you're a quarterback, you'd love to play for Dana Holgerson. He can coach you up. Well, it's like a lot of things with this West Virginia offense. The machine just keeps rolling, the parts change, but it doesn't matter who plays quarterback. They always put up phenomenal numbers. He's a quarterback friendly coach. There's no there's no question about that. He teaches them well, and they do a, a lot of different things on offense to, to respect. Clint Trickett, the second quarterback we've seen today, three and out on his opening drive. Passing here and incomplete through the hands of Mario Alford, who was trying to pull in his first catch of the day. Yeah, William and Mary brought a little pressure off the edge. Good, good job by Trickett, recognizing it. Made a good throw, just, just a drop pass by Alford. Trickett now 0 for 2 since coming into the game. Oh. 
Going to run it on second and ten. Smith, who's trying to grind for yards, got a couple out near the 25. William Mary defense doing a great job right now, keeping West Virginia on their toes, changing up looks. The other thing that jumps out at me, this defensive line, they are not physically overmatched in the run game against this West Virginia offense line. They're holding their own, doing a good job. Dropping eight into coverage here. You see they got three rushers. Third down and eight. Trickett going to throw it. Nope, he's going to be sacked. Great pressure coming from behind, and Mike Riley got there first, his first sack of the year. Another great defensive play call really there by Scott, defense coordinator Scott Boone. You know, I, I really like this little wrinkle they got. Rush three, drop eight, cloud all the passing lanes for this West Virginia offense, make this new quarterback make some tough decisions. Nick O'Toole kicks this one from inside his 10. Ballard can't make a play on it, and a great roll for West Virginia. Is this thing going to finally come down at the 22-yard line? William and Mary hanging in on the road. They lead it 14-7, and they've got the ball when we return on Fox Sports 1. Four thirteen to halftime here in West Virginia. William and Mary leading on the road 14-7. And coming up on the Pizza Hut halftime report, Rob Stone, Joe Platt, and Coy Wire in our Los Angeles studios talking about Johnny football back on the field today, a place I'm sure he feels much more comfortable than the headlines he's been making in recent weeks. And Ohio State, one of the preseason top fives, undefeated a year ago, not eligible for bowl play. And they have kicked off 2013 as well. Highlights coming up on the Pizza Hut halftime report. Michael Graham, a rushing touchdown, got banged up, but he soldiers on. And on first down, Cooper gets the carry. Not much happening. Will Clark able to make the stop from his defensive tackle position. Yeah, Will Clark, he was an impressive looking guy as well that we saw on Thursday at practice. Big, long, perfect, perfect fit for the defense end position in this 3-4 defense. He can two-gap people, which basically means he can he can hold up the offensive tackle and throw him whichever way he wants when he sees the ball carrier. Six and a half tackles for loss last year for Will Clark. He can be disrupted. Second down and ten. Again, Cooper carrying the ball. This time he gets a couple of yards out near the 30. Isaiah Bruce came over to pull him down. And it's interesting, the play calling here by Kevin Rogers seemed to be much more comfortable on the ground the last couple of drives if you're William and Mary. Yes, well, you know, he's looking at the big picture. He knows his defense on, on, on his team is not quite as deep. He wants to make sure they get a rest. It's the end of the second quarter. He's hoping they can maybe run a little clock, get a first down here, and maybe not let the West Virginia offense get a chance to score before the half. Third down and seven as we go under three minutes to play here in the first half. And they will run on third down. But going to be short of the first. West Virginia comes out, takes care of business. It was Anderson carrying the ball. And again, Isaiah Bruce from his outside linebacking position able to make the stop. And K.J. Dillon, a name we've not said today. The backup safety, a true sophomore comes in in nickel situations. Not a bad play call by William & Mary. I, I, I don't disagree with it. They got the lead. They don't want to force anything on third and long. Get a turnover, get something like that that gives West Virginia some momentum right now. The Tribe got the momentum right now. They don't want to give anything easy to the Mountaineers. John Carpenter standing at his own 15 to punt it away. A little pressure, but he rides it out. Jordan Thompson bobbled it last time, but pulls this one in cleanly at the 31, and that's where West Virginia will have the ball. Defense. So there were some questions coming into this week as to who would be the starting quarterback. Paul Millard, the veteran in the system. He's been here a couple of years backing up Geno Smith, got the start. Last two possessions, Clint Trickett, the transfer from Florida State, got his opportunity. And now with 2.06 to play, you're going to run your quick offense. Millard back in calling the shots for head coach Dana Holgerson. Yep, again, here we go. Underneath the center, I expect a run. Run is what we get. 
Not surprised to see Millard back in here right now. He's got the most experience in the offense. He has more experience running this two-minute drill than Trickett. Dana Holgerson knows that. He puts him in, lets him orchest orchestrate the show. Sims got three there to set up second down and seven. Three receivers top of your screen as again they give it to Sims. And he's got room getting the second level and pulled down near midfield by Quincy September. Minute 39 to go. Clock will stop here as they move the chains. West Virginia has two timeouts remaining. Good play call there by Dana Holgerson. Spread the defense out, run the draw, let Sims get in between the tackles, make some moves in space. It's, it's a run. If they're underneath the center, it's a run. Clock rolling again. Millard, play action. Has some time. Now the pocket breaks down. He lost the football. It's loose and covered up on the far side by Jasper Coleman. What a turn of events this is with 111 to play in the opening half. Unbelievable. Well, they're going to wish they ran after uh, I tried to call that there. They tried to kind of trick, trick the William & Mary defense and catch him with a play-action pass. Kind of backfired on them. You see the replay there. Mike Riley did a great job of swatting the ball out of, out of Millard's hands. Jasper Coleman comes, comes around, falls on the ball. I was glad he didn't try to pick it, pick it up and run. You know, in a situation like this, just get on the ball, let your offense get on the field, and try to get some points here before the half. How about the hustle from the big fella? 6'4", 290, running it down. First turnover of the day, and great field position for William & Mary, who lead it 14-7, and there he is, Jimmy Laycock. He's been an institution at the Virginia FCS school in his 34th season. Fifth on the all-time wins list among active coaches in FCS. Here's Graham on first down. One of the play fake. Dumps it off to Laws, who got out of bounds. Right at the 30. Pick up of a few. Brandon Golson that shoved him out. Darnell Laws in the flat. We've seen it a lot today. They're going to keep going to it until West Virginia stops it. West Virginia won the opening toss and deferred. So they will get the ball to start the second half, which makes that turnover and potential scoring opportunity even bigger if you can tie it up come out and you get the ball you got momentum now all of a sudden the tribe trying to snatch that momentum away second down and six 106 to play clock stop when laws went out of bounds Graham gonna throw it rolling right nothing there and he just tosses it over the head of Asmar to throw it away safe play there by Graham did a good job didn't really have a whole lot maybe had the tight end Robert Asmar in the flat didn't want to pull the trigger. I don't blame them. They got the lead. You play smart in this situation. Hopefully they can get it. You get either get a few yards here, get your team in better field goal position, or you get a first down here and maybe go for seven at some point. And that's what you like about having a senior quarterback, that decision-making ability. He's seasoned. He understands the circumstance. And now we'll see how he handles third and six from the West Virginia 30. Going to hand it off to Keith McBride, who's got the first down and more as he stumbles inside the 20 and pulled down at the 18-yard line. Carl Joseph came over to trip him up. Great play call. They're going to they're gonna fit with what they thought was the right thing to do in this game plan going in here. Don't let West Virginia get any cheap turnovers. Take the ball out of the quarterback's hand and keep the chains moving. Pickup of 13 for McBride on third and six. And William and Mary has used their first time out of the opening half. They're, they're, they're doing a good job in damage control, as I would say. They're playing it safe, keeping it close to the vest. They're going to continue with this formula. It's working, it's working here early. Why get away from it? 55 seconds away from the Pizza Hut halftime show. Coy, Joel, and Rob standing by in our Los Angeles studios to update you on the first Saturday of college football season. Got a report earlier from Patrick O'Neill that Villanova giving Boston College some problems today. Here it's William and Mary, already two FCS wins over FBS schools this weekend. Well, if anything in recent history has taught us, it's that there is parity in college football, whether it's 1A or 1AA. First and 10 for Graham. He's going to pass it. 
Rolling left, a lot of room to run. Spins the hips, back of the end zone, incomplete. Trying to find the tight end, Bo Ravel. Couldn't get it to him, and Carl Joseph laid the hit on. That's such a strong hit that Ravel has gone to a knee in the back of the end zone. You know, not a real good decision here by Michael Graham. Had plenty of room in front of him to run and get another 5, 10 yards here. Takes a little chance throwing it there back in the end zone. Why? You don't need to take that chance right now. Your team's controlling the game. Go get 5, 10 yards. Keep your offense in good positions. That's what they've done so well so far. It, it lets them run the ball or pass the ball. It, it makes them multidimensional. And, and you saw where he hit him there, and that's a perfect example of the coaches doing a nice job of translating the rules to their kids. This targeting rule in 2013 being taken very seriously. If you're flagged for it, you're ejected from the game. Joseph did a good job keeping his head up, hitting him in his midsection and not going above the shoulders or leading with the crown of the helmet. And it's good to see Ravel getting up and walking to the sideline. Here we go one more time. I mean, here you see Michael Graham. Nobody really in front of him. One guy about five yards downfield. You know, who knows? You might make a miss and get another 10 yards. I just don't think the, the, the risk here far outweighs the reward of trying to fit that ball in the back of the end zone to Bo Ravel. You know, West Virginia's defense, they're in a little bit of a tough spot here. Do you want to pressure or do you want to sit back and make William and Mary earn it? If I'm West Virginia, I sit back and make them earn it. Don't let them give anything easy. Don't let Trey McBride be one-on-one -on -one outside. McBride line up, bottom of your screen. The give here to Keith McBride, who carries it inside the 15, picked up about five yards, and the clock continues to roll down inside of 40 seconds. If you're William & Mary, you let it roll. You don't want West Virginia to touch the ball again this half. If possible, they're doing a good job of clock management right here. Jimmy Laycock lets the clock roll down to 32 seconds and calls the timeout. Leaves himself an opportunity here. If you do pick up the first down, you still have some time on the clock to make a play. If you don't, you kick the field goal, and it leads right back to what you're talking about. You don't leave any room for an opportunity on the West Virginia sideline. No, you don't want that. You don't want West Virginia to get the ball back, somehow maybe run a draw or a screen to Charles Sims, and he breaks for 50, and they get some cheap field goal before the half. With a bell cow offensively for William and Mary, without a doubt, their stud wide receiver, Trey McBride, and he's had a huge impact today. Yeah, Trey McBride, he's their go-to guy. We knew that coming in. Almost had a 1,000 yards receiving last year. Unbelievable body control. Seems to always catch these jump balls, even when I watched some tape of him last year. If I'm West Virginia, like I said earlier, I'm always going to keep a safety over the top. Make one of these other receivers beat you. Make Sean Ballard beat you or Kevin Hart or even the run game, but you don't want to go home tonight and think, wow, their best player, he tore our defense up today. Two catches, 68 yards, and both of them setting up touchdowns for the Tribe. We were knocking on the door here. Third and five. Graham going to pass. Right side incomplete. Looking for Cooper out of the backfield. Good play call again. I really like it. Kevin Rogers is playing very, he's coaching very smart. You know, there he throws the screen, hopes he gets the first down. He figures, I'll get a completion and the clock will keep running. But unfortunately, Cooper drops the ball. Now they get a chance to kick the field goal and go up 10. Ball spotted at the 12-yard line. Brent Caprio, the holder, set up at the 19 on the right hash. John Carpenter, three for six a year ago, is long 32 yards. This one, a 29-yard attempt. And it's good. William and Mary takes the turnover, turns it into points, and now a two-score lead, 17-7 with 23 seconds to play in the opening half. Yeah, there's so much to be impressed right now with William and Mary. You know, the other thing that jumps out of me just as we go along here, you know, their offensive line, they're hanging in there. They're pushing around the West Virginia defensive line a little bit. Uh, the, it's a pretty solid group up front for William & Mary on the offensive line. You know, they got some big guys as far as Andrew Jones at center and this Trevor Springman, their right guard. He's a real killer. If you watch him a little bit, you'll see him mashing people all over the field. What do you tell your team if you're Dana Halgerson? 
at halftime. You just you continue to tell them, play smart football. Don't panic because of the score. We know we can score points in a hurry. Let's just play a Simon football and not let anyone say, okay, I need to make a play. Just play smart. I really think at the end of the day, that's all they got to do coming out in the second half. He might have to find a few ways to find some, some plays that can get some big plays or big chunks of yards for the West Virginia offense. Carpenter going to send this one to the back of the end zone. Sims going to sit on it there. And with 23 seconds left, I would anticipate the West Virginia offense would do the same in this situation, only two timeouts. And Millard again will be the quarterback. He's led all but two series today. I, I would expect here with 23 seconds in the half, you're going to see the Mountaineers either run a screen, a draw, or maybe even a screen to one of the receivers outside. It's just going to be something they hope that one of their guys can break a tackle or make somebody miss and, and make a big play. And Sims behind Millard. Gets it on the delay. Hit in the backfield and brought down Tyler Clater there to make the play. A loss of a few. And the Mountaineers going to be content to go to the locker room. They jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Scored on their opening drive. Since that time, all William and Mary. Great effort offensively and defensively for the Tribe. They've scored 17 unanswered points. It's halftime in Morgantown, West Virginia. William and Mary, 17. West Virginia, 7. And now it's the Pizza Hut halftime report from our Los Angeles studios. Here's Rob Stone. <laughs> 